We were speaking with CBS correspondent David Pogue when the Titan first went missing. And he told us at that time that he was preparing a follow-up piece to air on Sunday morning, and that's happened. And also the release of more of the interviews with CEO Stockton Rush. So there is David Pogue. He's in Connecticut with us once again. And David, thanks for coming back for some more time today. Sure thing. I have been thinking of you, I want to tell you, I've been thinking of you since we got the definitive word of the catastrophic implosion and the deaths of the five people who were on board Titan. How have you been? <laughs> Thank you for asking. 47 TV interviews, nobody's asked that question. Uh, it's, it's a scary brew of, of emotions. I mean, there's little survivor's guilt, there's, uh, you know, anger, there's um, shaking gratitude uh, just to be alive. But by my calculations, the CBS dive, which was aborted for mechanical problems, happened in July 2022. And then between that time and the fatal dive, that thing went down only three more times. So to me, it... It feels like I won a round of Russian roulette. I was going to say that's that's there, but for the grace of God, that's a that's a pretty heavy burden to think about. I would imagine, just personally, it is. And, and it's, here's something else that nobody realizes: this year, as you said, Polar Prince was the ship they rented as the base of operations to take the Titan out to sea. Last year, it was a ship called the Horizon Arctic. That's the ship that I was on, and I don't know if you've been <laughs> that in the weeds with this reporting. But the ship whose ROV found the wreckage is none other than the Horizon Arctic. So I, the CBS crew got a tour of that ROV last year when we were on the ship. And they're like, yeah, we use these for uh, deep sea oil rig rescues. We can pick up pieces off the seafloor. I mean, just so, I mean, it's a freakish coincidence, but very chilling. Absolutely. You, in reporting about this, now, uh, as I mentioned, you released the interviews that you did with CEO Stockton Rush. And we'll, we're going to play some of it in just a second. But I'm just wondering, um, you had done after you went this, so it was July of 2022, nine days at sea with him. And then the month after, you did these extensive interviews with him and have released them now. Why did you decide it was important to hear him now in hindsight and obviously after his death? Well, first of all, he's not here to answer the questions. But... In those interviews, of course, he did answer the questions. So it's, it's incredible to me that, I mean, when I look back at the transcripts, I realize, wow, we spent most of that time talking about safety and the design of that carbon fiber sub. I mean, in tremendous detail, we, you know, you, when, as you know, when you do a TV story, you only get a few minutes, but this is hours and hours of interviews. We're going to stop and pause and play part of that. As you say, the very issues, the elements that have come under scrutiny and will in these investigations, you talk about and you talk about MacGyvering, which is the part that really caught our attention. So let's play a little segment, David, and then I'll come back and continue with our questions. It seems like a lot of the way you made this is by taking off-the-shelf parts and sort of MacGyvering them together. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Does that not raise anybody's eyebrows in the industry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely an outlier. There were a lot of rules out there that didn't make engineering sense to me. There's certain things that you want to be uh, buttoned down, and that's the pressure vessel. Once the pressure vessel is, you're certain it's not going to collapse on everybody, everything else can fail. There are so many incredible excerpts we could have played, but then again, that MacGyvering comment really stands out. It just seems, listening to all of those, those interviews and the transcripts, inevitable almost, just a matter of time now, again, in hindsight, David. It, it does. I mean, and you can see me cracking up in that scene, partly because I find that people will open up to you if they think they have a receptive audience in the questioner. And partly because it seems like he's swashbuckling a little bit. It seems like he's he's trying to be provocative a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really think that Stockton saw himself as a, I mean, he, he wanted to be an astronaut. So I, I think he's sort of that, the right stuff kind of guy, or he, he saw himself that way. Um, it's just incredible that he would say that stuff on camera. It really is. What do you think is going to happen to the industry now, the submersible industry, all of the bringing in civilians or tourists, if you will, explorers, to go down and see Titanic? What impact will this have? 
I, I can't imagine that anyone will be taking tourists to the Titanic anytime soon. There, there have been three or four attempts over the decades. Uh, most of them have the, had the same sorts of problems that the Titan did. In other words, these commercial outfits would run into weather delays and constant, constant mechanical problems with these subs, which are essentially prototypes. They're not mass produced. Every single one is a unique set of problems and, and parts that were made only once. Um, so it's very difficult to put that kind of business together. And now I, I'd be surprised if anybody tries again within at least a decade. And yet it's interesting because one of your lines of scripts, you talk about how you think the demand for this kind of adventure will remain for those who can afford it. You write, the risk of dying gives meaning to living, which is extraordinary given what we've seen. I'm, I'm trying to make people realize that people die every single year trying to climb Mount Everest. They die every single year skydiving and scuba diving. Um, and there's no media scrutiny there. You know, it's, it, and so in the larger sense, I think the adventure tourism industry will not take a hit. I, I, think, I think it'll march right on because some people have the itch. Some people just gotta skydive. Couple of questions while I still have you. Uh, I mentioned the investigations underway, both the U.S. Coast Guard but also Canadian officials. But the U.S. Coast Guard yesterday, I was struck saying, yes, they're going to look at everything in terms of cause that led to that catastrophic event, but also accountability and recommendations to pursue civil or criminal sanctions as necessary. Criminal sanctions as necessary. Do you foresee that happening? Could that ever happen in your view? Well, as you can imagine, I've spent a lot of time thinking about were there red flags that we saw? I mean, my experience over and over and over again was red flag, plausible explanation, red flag, plausible explanation. So, you know, red flag every night on that ship, there was a mandatory meeting where they had this giant checklist of things that needed to be fixed and replenished on the sub before the next dive. The flashlight batteries need replacing the porthole needs wiping down, stuff like that. And they would assign that to different crew members. And I asked P.H. Narjolet, the famous French explorer who died in the Titanic also, and the Titan also, um, I asked him, is, is that typical to have this many things that need fixing and tweaking? And he said, absolutely. I've been on five of these Titanic subs and that's what it's like. He said the mirror had problems, the Alvin had problems, the Nautil had problems. It's just part of the business. So that cycle of red flag and reassurance just got sort of etched in, in my brain. Well, you know, it, it makes perfect sense. I mean, the plausibility, as you say, but the message delivered by very experienced adventurers, no wonder it was convincing. But it will be interesting to see if it heads off in that civil or criminal path, for sure. I was and, listening... And I, I, sorry, I should, I should also point out that don't forget about the waiver, this incredible waiver that we all signed that outlined all the different ways we could that could result in permanent disability, emotional trauma, or death. Um, just operating on the surface ship could result in blah, 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 blah and death. Um, operating in and around the Titan on the deck could result in death. Getting into the Titan could cause death. Um, so the, the lawyers are going to have to have a tough time yes. with that. I mean, everybody signed that. I was listening over the week to... Um James Cameron, of course, the adventurer himself and a great film producer. But you highlighted him in your report as well. But he has said often in the last days how people ignored the lessons of Titanic in his estimation, believed they were more powerful than the forces of nature. And you talk about the arrogance and hubris uh, that he views to think otherwise. What do you make of his comments and his sentiment and whether it's helpful in all of this? I think his emergence on the media scene is a little bit fraught. It's, it's a little bit controversial. He is the latest in a long line of people who are now coming forward and saying that design will never work and I knew it all the time. And I'm like, well, dudes, this thing has been running for three summers now. Where were you then? I mean, as far as, far as we know, the last people who ever objected to the design of the sub was 2018. That's when the, the employee quit over safety issues, and that's when the, the group of submersible engineers contacted Stockton to complain. Ever since then, 
since he's been down to the Titan depths 20 times in the Titan without an, an incident. You know, I, I just think it's, you have to remember, nobody said anything at the time. There was before, and now there's after. David, thank you. I'm such a fan of your reporting, and I've appreciated the time with you in these two conversations. David Pogue, who's a CBS News correspondent from uh, Connecticut this morning. Thanks again, David. Glad you're well, and My thanks pleasure. for sharing that with us.